and distraction for the next 10 minutes, as what I study is dead bodies of organisms that were killed by an asteroid. So, sorry. This is a map showing you where do we know for sure that such a cosmic crash took place. Uh, there are 190 places right now and counting, the number is growing. So you may, may think, well, it doesn't look so bad, does it? Over entire planet, 190 places, uh, over 4.5 billion years, well, I can take my chances. Well, that would be very unwise of you to do that. That's a very false uh, security uh, sense that you would have because it's enough to have a look at the moon to know that there was many, many, many more of those impact craters having been formed on the Earth. And only because we have on Earth such an active geology that is removing those sites from our view, uh, we, don't have, we don't see them. So the ones that we have on the moon are from micrometer size up to something that you can see with your own eyes even standing on the Earth. Like next, hopefully tomorrow or this day when there will be less clouds, you will be able to see the moon and see those round, dark places uh, on the surface of the moon. Those are gigantic impact craters. Similar things happened on Earth. And even right now, in, even though most of those impacts happened in the deep past, uh, even right now we have quite a lot of material still hitting uh, the moon and the earth. In fact, it's worth a great blue whale worth of material every day. So be scared, <laughs> be very scared. Because, you know, you should remember what happened to dinosaurs. They cannot tell you about that because, you know, they are dead <laughs> because of the asteroid that hit the Earth 65 million years ago and just wiped them out. So, uh huh. But luckily for us, uh, most of the stuff that is, uh, is hitting us is, is pretty small. And so here you can see a plot that is showing you the... Uh, size of the asteroid uh, that can hit us, and on the y-axis, uh, you can see the, how often does it happen. So the chick loop is the dinosaur killer, and it happens more or less every 100 millions of years. Of course, on average, which means that, you know, the next one can happen next Thursday. Just saying. <laughs> the smaller ones are happening less often. So that, that's good for, uh, for us because then we can stare at the uh, night sky and see those nice shooting stars which are formed when uh, pieces that are you know, about uh, grain size or centimeter size are uh, going into our atmosphere, heating up and just uh, disintegrating. So those are not dangerous as long as you have nice atmosphere to protect you. Um, and those are, you know, just shooting into the air right now, like every uh, couple of uh, microseconds you have something. The larger ones, ha, huh, it works. <laughs> the larger ones uh, can produce those nice uh, bolides, uh, which are very uh, impressive looking, and also can produce uh, some very small damage to the cars, for example, and this is how we have uh, some meteorites. So if you want to touch some meteorites, for example, a piece of the moon or piece of Mars, just talk to me during the break because I have some with me. So just saying. <laughs> Advertisement. And, but once we get to slighter, slightly larger pieces, this is where it really becomes to be dangerous. So if we are uh, around 20 meters in diameter, as what happened uh, in Chalabinsk in 2013 only, this is something that can cause people to die. In fact, this very, very small asteroid caused 1,500 people to be seriously injured and two people almost died. 20 meters in diameter, this is nothing. We cannot even really see it. We have not seen this one coming. So, sorry. Slightly larger ones, about 50, kilometers, uh, 50 meters in diameter, this is what caused Tunguska, most probably. 
the area of the forest in the middle of Siberia was flattened. Uh, it was thousands of uh, kilometers squared. So a lot of area that was just damaged. And if you have a material, the same size asteroid, but made from different, uh, more rigid material from iron meteorite, you end up with something like that. This hole in the ground in Arizona is 1.2 kilomet uh, kilometers in diameter and 200 meters in depth, and it was ban done by 50 meter asteroid. So based on physics, we know that those things relatively small impact craters, because you know the one that killed the dinosaurs was um, 180 kilometers in diameter crater. So those are the small ones that are usually ignored because you know they cannot kill all the dinosaurs, but they can still produce a lot of damage. And so we know that th those ones killed some stuff, but we have not found bodies before. Well, luckily in 2014, we did. So we find some dead bodies that were killed by an asteroid, uh, and then we have uh, made our extremely high-tech research methods look like that. <laughs> you know, geology, yay. So we went to the field, we started digging. We started digging within the impact crater of, of Kali, Maine. Uh, there are, uh, very often when you have those small impact craters, they disintegrate in the atmosphere uh, and form not one, but many Im smaller impact craters. So we digged within material that was ejected from the crater itself. We made a hole that looked suspiciously as a grave, and we discovered dead bodies. Dead bodies of, okay, trees, but still. So those are pieces of charcoal that was found within the material that was uh, ejected from the crater. And you may think, well, it could have been you know, killed before and then just intermixed with the, uh, with the ejecta. Yes, it could, but it wasn't. How do we know that? Well, first of all, we know that all of the pieces are spruce branches, so those are not the, um, the roots of the tree. Second of all, uh, thanks to C14 dating, yes, some slightly more high-tech uh, methods that were also applied, not only shovels. Uh, so we know that all of them were killed in about the same time. But what is most interesting and what I have spent my last two years on is sitting in front of the microscope and measure, measuring <laughs> reflectance of those charcoals. Charcoal reflectance, you can see here, can be either quite low, 0.7%, or pretty high, 2.7%. So very light in compared to this one. And depending on the amount of energy that you kind of pump into the structure of wood, it becomes more or less um, organized, so more or less light in color. So based on that, you can say that this charcoal was formed in lower temperature than this one here. And this plot is showing you how the charcoal that was formed in impact craters, the blue dots, compared to the charcoal that is uh, formed in normal forest fires. As you can see, and this part, uh, this part of the plot here showing you reflectance, so how hot was it? And this part here is showing you how variable your measurements are. So here you can see that the forest fires can produce very highly reflective uh, pieces, but also uh, very highly reflective pieces can be found just next to pretty dark pieces. This is why you have generally movement to this part of the plot and also to the higher values of standard deviation. This part here, the blue ones are all very similar to each other, which means that they were formed in very, very similar conditions. Actually, this, the most similar charcoal that I could find is the one that can be produced by people in you know, the artificial, um, the places where you produce uh, the charcoal artificially so that you can later use it for smithing or whatever. So, but uh, those values would be somewhere here. 
So it's pretty cold, about 550 degrees, but and very, very consistent. So how, and uh, we have found those similar charcoals with e almost exactly the same properties all around the world and also in a couple of other locations. So it's not something that is unique to this particular site that I just described. It's something that is very characteristic to all of them. So it's not only one rock impact crater, one rock asteroid that killed those poor trees, it's all of them. So how did they die? Well, we had this nice forest in Estonia or anywhere else, and then we had our asteroid hitting and producing the impact, and then trees were damaged, and some of them, the crater was farmed, formed, and some of them were buried within the ejecta. That, surprisingly, was hot, and only then have turned into the charcoal. So, in summary, those poor trees have been grilled alive. And I just want to remember, you, for you to remember a couple of things. First of all, space rocks collide with Earth, and they can be very dangerous, as dinosaurs cannot tell you because they are dead. Second of all, the small ones can be also very dangerous, especially if they hit unlucky location. And if we study the, aster the pieces of uh, dead bodies that were killed by an asteroid, we can learn something about the asteroid. So thank you. Mm -hmm.